Maxwell's equations, Gauss's law. So it's pretty well known if we have a charge, positive or negative, that we will get electric flux emerging from that or converging to it. And in fact, later we'll study this equation, which is describing the electric flux density D around the point charge Q. And what we'll see is that if we have a positive charge, the electric field lines emerge from that charge. They point outward. Sometimes that positive charge is called a source of the electric flux. If we have a negative charge, we really have the same picture. It's just that the direction of those field lines are now inward toward the negative charge. Sometimes that negative charge is called a sink of the electric flux. And of course, we can have multiple charges, charge distributions, or any number of things, and the electric fields will do their stuff around the charges, always emerging from positive and ending on negative charges. So that's really our picture of what Gauss's law is telling us. Now, Gauss's law is doing a lot more that we'll get into. If we change the magnitude of the charge, We'll draw this as having more electric field lines. Uh, what we'll talk about in just a little bit, that there really is no such thing as electric field lines. But the stronger the charge, the more intense the electric field. But we tend to think of it in terms of density of the lines. Uh, and so anyway, this is trying to illustrate that. Okay, now on to the field lines, because I really don't like the concept of, of field lines. It's very misleading. So let's say we have a positive charge and we're drawing our field lines. If you're new to this, it's really implying to you that the electric flux exists on the line and not off of the line. And this is completely untrue and it's giving you a false picture of really what the electric field looks like. The electric field is a smooth and continuous phenomenon. It looks much more like a cloud or a fog, but there is a direction associated with it at every point, and that direction can be different. And so imagine putting your finger somewhere, pick a point in that electric field cloud or fog, and there's a direction associated. So we'll move a little bit in that direction. We'll look again at the new direction, move a little bit, and we keep doing that we will trace out what we call electric field lines. But that's really just a mathematical construction to let us keep track of the direction of the field. So it does not at all imply that there is an electric field only on those lines and not off of the line. So try to banish that thought from your, your brains. Okay, so uh, I'll get off my soapbox about electric field lines. To understand Gauss's law, the best way, I think, is to understand that we're really looking at two different ways of calculating the total charge given some charge distribution. Method number one, we know that the electric field lines emerge from a charge. So if we can wrap that charge, or multiple charges even, within some volume, and here we're doing it two different times with two different surfaces. And I'm only showing a two-dimensional cross-section, but imagine these being three-dimensional blobs. And I've completely enclosed that volume. So all of these electric field lines are punching straight out through that surface. Well, maybe not necessarily straight, but they're punching out through that surface. It makes sense that we could probably analyze just the electric fields at the surface and somehow figure out what charge was is enclosed inside that surface and that's exactly what this surface integral does it's integrating the electric flux so we have d which is the electric flux density we're only interested in that component of d that is punching straight through that surface so that's what we're drawing here and we integrate that over the entire surface and we can do this with any surface that we want to. I'm just showing two surfaces here, but any surface we want to, and usually we'll pick something that's mathematically convenient. For a point charge, I would probably pick a sphere. So that's 
method number one for somehow evaluating how much charge is, is enclosed within a surface. We've integrated the electric flux. There's a second way, and maybe it's simpler. We can just simply integrate the charge density within that volume to get total charge. That makes sense. So here I'm drawing a volume integral on that inner surface. And we, our integral will simply raster through this three-dimensional space and add up all of the charge density to get total charge. Now Gauss's law in integral form essentially just sets these two approaches equal. The one approach, we integrated the electric flux emerging or converging to a charge. And in method two, we integrated the charge density. Both of those lead to total charge. And if we set those equal, we arrive at Gauss's law in integral form. Very often this is not written, this Q equals, but I like to keep it there because it, it reminds us really what's happening here and how we got it. To get Gauss's law in differential form, we will apply the divergence theorem. Remember how we'll use the divergence theorem. We can convert closed contour surface integrals to volume integrals. So if we look at Gauss's law, it had a closed surface integral. That's, this is when we were integrating the flux around some surface. So we can convert this to a volume integral that is now integrating the divergence of D throughout the volume. But now what we'll see is we have two volume integrals that are set equal. So if we look at this, if we have two volume equal integrals and they're equal, that means what's inside of those integrals has to be equal. So that means the divergence of D is equal to the charge density. And that is Gauss's law in differential form. 